Hey guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. Thanks for joining me today. While you're here, please make sure to like this video, subscribe, hit the red bell. And if you're listening to this on podcast, please make sure to leave a review as this allows my content to get in front of more people. And thank you for that. My name is Judy Cho and I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. I focus on root cause healing. And oftentimes that starts with healing the gut with the carnivore cures meat only elimination diet. While we're talking about root cause healing today, I'm excited that I had the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Eric Dorniger. We are going to talk about chronic inflammatory response syndrome, how that oftentimes is manifested because of mold and Lyme and other biotoxin illnesses. Sometimes people do not get better fully on a meat only carnivore diet. I work with a lot of these people and usually they feel better initially eating meat only, but then they start plateauing and then they don't fully get better. And they don't understand why, when there are so many benefits of eating a meat only diet. What's fascinating is there is a population of our community that actually struggles from chronic fatigue syndrome and chronic inflammatory response syndrome. In this conversation, we get into a lot of that nuance. So if you are eating a meat only carnivore diet and you aren't getting better, you may want to look a little deeper into this conversation. And then all the handouts I will put in the show notes about if you may be suffering from something more root cause than gut healing, than just changing your diet. Dr. Eric Dorniger is a Sears chronic inflammatory response syndrome certified practitioner under Dr. Shoemaker, and he currently practices in Boulder, Colorado at the Roots and Branches Integrative Healthcare. He focuses and dedicates to helping patients with unresolved health concerns, as he was also really sick and trying to find his own underlying cause of illness. Dr. Eric Dorniger achieved his pre-med from the University of Colorado Boulder, and he also completed his Master's of Science in Acupuncture and Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine in 2003. This conversation will be so helpful for people that are not getting fully healed from a meat-only carnivore diet. Let's get right into the interview. Hi, Dr. Eric Dorniger. I am so excited to have you on. Um, I had Dr. Shoemaker on a while ago, and I really just wanted to talk a little bit about chronic inflammatory response syndrome, and even just other illnesses that can arise when people are not fully getting better. Um, If you can share a little bit about who you are. Yeah. So my name is Eric Dorninger. I'm a past year trained uh, naturopathic doctor and licensed acupuncturist. I went to pre-med at University of Colorado Boulder. Used to ride with the ambulance and, and do a little bit with first aid and EMT. And I love blending the best of conventional and natural holistic integrated model to get to the bottom of chronic illness. And when I rode with the ambulance, I really thought I wanted to be an ER doc Mm -hmm. because I love what emergency medicine does. And the job of the ER is to make sure you don't die today. And they're very, very, very good at it. However, they discharge you back to your chronic illness. And I realized there's no one there to scoop up those patients and say, how do we get to the underlying causes of your illness? Let's not load you up with modalities and and supplement pedal. Let's really deep dive in your diagnosis, find the underlying causes and restore your quality of life. So I decided to be a naturopath. I was going to really never leave the first principle of the therapeutic order, which is remove obstacle to cure. And Dr. Joe Pizzorno, one of the founders of Bastyr, later um, explained that more as identify and treat the underlying causes. So my job for chronic illness is to not give it a name, right? Fibromyalgia right? Yeah. I looked that up. Algae means pain and mild fibers mean muscle fibers. So I told you my muscles hurt and you told me in Greek, your muscles hurt. Hey, let me go tell my wife how proud I am of my diagnosis today, right? This is nonsense. We need to be asking why your muscles hurt in that situation as any kind of doctor, right? We should always be gunning for the underlying causes. The holistic community is not any better. We just label people with adrenal fatigue when they're tired, And I'm going to tell you, if I send you to the endocrinologist and give you cortisol releasing hormone challenge, you're going to see that that adrenal puts out cortisol. The adrenal is not dead. Most of these people have hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis issues. And 
that's usually based on some kind of inflammatory syndrome. And what we do all day at our clinic is go inflammation hunting, inflammation killing. So you have to find those underlying causes of inflammation so that the brain and the adrenal can communicate and you can run circadian rhythms and farmer's hours and actually have a good productive day. I love everything you brought up. I'm really excited because I will work with clients and they will, in their interview a questionnaire, they'll bring up, oh, I suffered from fibromyalgia or I have hormone imbalances or thyroid. And it's just, these are facts, but I really want to work on my gut or I really want to do something else about the diet. And it's so fascinating to me of, well, why are you suffering from those things? Do we not think that these pieces are fixable in a sense? And a lot of times when I start talking with them, they say, oh, I've been suffering from this for 20 years. It's a, it's just a fact. And I love that your clinic is trying to get to the root cause. Uh, one question I wanted to ask you is, I know you're a little different. It's not just that you wanted to become a root cause healer, but you and your family actually suffered from illness. And that was also a motivating factor for you. Can you talk a little bit about your illness and how you overcame it? Yeah. So it's also a little blow to the ego, right? So <laughs> you're sitting here. So I've been doing chronic illness for 20 years and our job is to solve and resolve. That's what we do for chronic illness and graduate people back to a reasonable quality of life. And even if you can take someone from an F to a B plus, mm -hmm. that's a radical different life and a life worth living. Whereas an F is things like suicidal ideation and this is good as it gets and why bother and severe apathy. I had a patient yesterday who lost his dad about four years ago and he felt nothing. That's how sick he was. And he had an awesome dad, but his, he's actually a service case, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, which is the fancy term for mold illness. And, and he just had no endorphins to even feel. So there's some people who can't process through trauma because they're not making endorphins. And then there's people who really don't even feel trauma because they're so apathetic, even when major stuff happens in their life. So in 2013, we were doing really well with a lot of chronic ill and, and, and things like autoimmunity and things like Hashimoto's, for example, that's not a thyroid disease. That's an immune system disease with a thyroid fallout, right? So we teach doctors when I go out on the road to go upstream and say, why immune system dysregulation, why immune system confusion resulting in auto attack on this little gland that does so much for every single cell in the body. And we were getting good results. And in 2013, there was a massive flood in Boulder, Colorado. And I don't know if people remember this, but Boulder's surrounded by flat irons and the earth is not very porous. It's a lot of clay. And we got 16 inches of rain, which is a year's worth of rain in one week. So literally the whole city flooded. And I remember it started out kind of fun for people. The college kids were biking in six inch rivers going down the, the road. And then all of a sudden the poopy water came out of the sewer system and the entire town was under, right? And, and, and literally at, at about a quarter of homes flooded. And what I noticed in my practice is patients who had never gotten better with us got worse. Mm -hmm. And I, I take that personally. People say, don't be attached to the outcome. And I understand that from a don't lose your mind over trying too hard, but I am severely invested in getting results for my patients. Yes. We're in charge of your time, your money, and your energy. When you walk through the door at Roots and Branches and they are limited, you don't have endless amounts of that. And I take that very personally to get results. We spend smart money on right diagnostics to get true underlying causes and then try and manage the time and, and your energy in the healing process to get you back to a taxpaying citizen who can be productive and go for a run and freaking watch your kids play basketball and, and, and really enjoy life. And people who were getting better with us also got worse, handful of them, right? So people who never got better got worse. And then my whole family got worse. And what, what I uh, realized is, oh my gosh, maybe this has to do something with water damage. And I had this very eccentric phlebotomist who handed me mold warriors from Dr. Shoemaker about two years prior and said, you think a lot like this guy. I think you'd like his work. And she, every day there was a new idea from her, right? She loved holistic medicine. And so kind of took it with a grain of salt. And, and I, I take everything anyone says to heart and, and just kind of run it through my filters of true or not true. But she gave that to me. She was my first introduction to Shoemaker. And then I said, huh, I wonder if what we have here is some kind of mold thing. Right. And I was totally mold illiterate. We were living in a semi-arid desert in Boulder, Colorado. If you see a little warped floorboard, it'll just dry out. Don't worry about it, you know? And, and little did I know, 
all you need mold spores or in the Mojave desert, right? You need two ingredients to create human illness. You need food, which is the American good looking piece of junk home, which we build with paper and, and wood pulp. We literally, this is paper right now. Now um, commercials a little better because there's steel two by fours behind here, but on a home, there's going to be wood. It's pulp, it's mold food, right? We build with carpet padding and, and ceiling tiles. And then we also, uh, it's the three little pig story. And we still have one missing ingredient and that's water. And once you have the water, then the mold can go into amplification and get to statistical levels to drive human illness. So we had had multiple um, water damage experiences in our home already. Supply line leaked to the refrigerator, that buckled hallway wood flooring, and I just said, out to dry out. Now we had chimney flashing fail and the entire north wall of our home was wet and things were starting to smell. And we actually took in some friends of ours whose house totally flooded and she's like, it don't smell right in here, you know, and, and they were stay, we were hosting them, right? Pre Airbnb and all, all that stuff. And I said, huh, maybe there's something to this, this, this mold thing. At the time, my four-year-old, now 12, was jumping into bed every night with chronic joint pain, tummy aches, headaches, mood lability, and was having accidents in the bed. And I would literally rub Arnica cream on his joints while I held him at one in the morning and I would pray to God, I would say, dear Lord, he doesn't have a bleeping Arnica deficiency. What is this child's underlying cause? Right. Are we off to children's hospital to get a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis diagnosis? What's the deal? And I started evaluating uh, mold illness and thank God I stumbled on Dr. Shoemaker's work. I was primed a little bit from my phlebotomist uh, who handed me the, the mold warriors book. And I said, holy guacamole, there's a guy out there, the godfather, Dr. Richie Shoemaker, who did all the hardcore right. controlled studies, peer reviewed published out of a mom and pop primary care clinic in Pocomoke, Maryland, who showed the honest diagnostic criteria for saying you have mold illness or you don't, right? So we ran through that criteria and we can talk more about that later. And we realized four out of us were in chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Wow. I was an 11352B. I still am. That gene's never going away. That's what's known as the dreaded gene for the, our listeners. You're not dreaded. Your prognosis is not dreaded. This gene just sucks if you don't know why you're sick, right? You're going to be at the rheumatologist, the neurologist, and you're over at the psychologist and the psychiatrist and the infertility doc, all because of undiagnosed SIRS, right? right? So, so when people get to us, they're usually on Dr. 17. So I'm a dreaded gene. My wife's a 4353. We did this thing called making love. And we had our older dreaded gene son and my younger double dreaded gene son. So he's an 11352B and a 4353. Because you're going to get one or the other gene from mom and dad. Unless there's a story about the mailman, you get your HLA, your chromosome six immune response genetics from mom and dad, biological mom, biological dad, right? So even on adopted uh, patients, we can see what their biological parents gave them right. in, in regards to immune response genes, right? And for those of you who are saying, what does he mean immune response genes? HLA DQ2 and HLA DQ8 are our immune response genes for celiac. Doesn't mean you're born with celiac. It means the gun is loaded and we don't know if and when, how many bites of gluten you eat you'll eventually wake up that gene to auto attack your intestinal lining and destroy your gut wall, right? So there's HLA for psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylosis. Hashimoto's is a 79% genetic predisposition with HLA, type one diabetes, and then of course, biotoxin illness, otherwise known as mold illness or chronic Lyme or uh, seafood toxicity or algae blooms or recluse spider venom. And then mold actinomycetes and bacterial endotoxin or, or, or poopy water sewer gas are the three building things that can that can get you sick so i started my journey into starting to evaluate patients while i was evaluating my own family and treating my own family and we had 40 four zero isolated water damage experiences wow in our own home and i joke with patients i say i do sirs by divine mandate right? God said, you will stay here and learn this. I'm putting you in internship. This is your residency. And it was an important residency because I'm a blue collar kid with white collar educational opportunities. 
So I built, you know, wheelchair ramps and youth group going up and skateboard ramps and I, I can handle a sawzall and all that stuff. But I had no idea on how to think through a building envelope. Right. And, and, and Bruce Lee says, you must be like water. Dr. D says, you must think like water. Right. So you have to really say, how are those gutters running? Where is that supply line nut to the, to the ice maker a little loose? What's behind there? Is that tile? Is that wood floor? So we started dealing with our home and it took six months and $200,000. And I will tell you, we're a thousand service cases in, and my home is still the top three most expensive homes we ever dealt with. We should have just ripped everything to the studs. We didn't know that because we had 40 isolated water damage experiences. So about two thirds of our home was ripped open, right? The funniest one was I put in this kind of hippie soaker tub that I got reclaimed from resource 2000 in Colorado that baked in the hot Colorado sun two years before I installed it. And my wife stretched out her legs, tub cracks, 40 gallons of water from the second floor into the first floor. I go in there, she's butt naked in the tub, dry as a bone with no water in the bathtub. I'm like, where the water go? That way, our herbalist friend Katie was living downstairs and she's screaming, guys, and 40 gallons of water just flooding through. When we finally, it just came through one light socket. When we finally ripped all that out, it was like a sunburst of water damage that went approximately 16 feet in every direction. That's water right? So you really have to think like water. Took us about six months to clear that out. Two weeks in the cholestyramine for Ozzy, my little guy. No joint pain, no headache, no tummy pain, no mood lability, and dry as a bone out of diapers. And the reason ki kids can continue uh, having accidents is because they crash their antidiuretic hormone. So you really have to know as a parent, if your five-year-old's like out of daytime diapers for two years and they're still wetting the bed, you have to think, is this SIRS, mm. right? And this gets so crazy because there's so much poor shame and blame in those little tykes. And they now, now they're 11 and 12 and they're all uptight. Like, what if I go over to Jimmy's and, 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 and wet the bed or, or pee the sleeping bag? You know, it's freaking SIRS, right? So, so the, that was our entry into SIRS. And it was at a, I, I rarely go to Starbucks. I don't mind Starbucks, but I was at a Starbucks on Arapahoe Avenue on, on, on 30th and Arapahoe by King Supers and Bowler reading chapter three of Mold Warriors. And I said, holy sugar, this guy figured it out. And that was the biotoxin pathway where I learned how nature toxins in 25% of the American population cannot get tagged and assassinated in a clean, effective manner. So you turn on an alternate immune system called the innate immune responses. And that's like Arnold in the predator where he knows there's a beast out there, but I can't see it. Shoot at it and start spraying bullets and palm trees are falling and encampments are blowing up and, and, and towers are dropping over, but the beast doesn't die. Right. That's chronic inflammatory response syndrome, where your innate immune system is cytokine storming or spraying bullets out into your system, causing collateral damage. And one of the biggest collateral damage is inflaming your hypothalamus right. so that this almighty hormone of satiation, uh, leptin can't bind properly and release this king or queen hormone of your body called MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone. And when that, when the queen crashes, all downstream biochemistry crashes and you get what Dr. Shoemaker titled multi-symptom, multi-system illness. So lots of different systems, and, uh, symptoms and lots of different uh, systems. And so that's why tummy pain and, and Dr. McMahon, who's um, kind of our, our captain of, of the SERS community, he was a pediatrician of 25 years and then became a SERS provider. And he is who taught me just simple SERS. And if you have a kid with fatigue, headaches, and tummy pain, you highly likely are dealing with SERS, yes. but you have them take the clustered symptoms list, which is 37 symptoms arranged into 13 clusters. And a cluster can be just a one word cluster like fatigue, or it can be multiple symptoms like decreased learning, decreased word finding ability, memory issues. And if you say yes to one of those five in that cluster, that's still a positive cluster. Mm -hmm. And if you're eight of 13 clusters or more, you should move forward with Dr. Shoemaker's peer reviewed published labs to confirm or deny uh, CIRS as the diagnosis. So we did all that with the kids and to this day, the Dorninger family has some of the craziest positive 
SIRS diagnostic criteria on labs ever. And we went through the Shoemaker protocol and we redid the labs and everyone is normal and healthy and happy. And to this day, my kids are spoiled brat for two reasons. They're going to get to go to college if they do well in school and they get two kinds of vacations. We either go to gorgeous, nice outdoor places that are relatively cost effective like Moab or we go camping on the sandy beaches of Glendo Reservoir in Wyoming, or we're going to new build hotel, right? Mm-hmm. And I'd rather go to like a hipster holiday inn with Wi-Fi that was built a year ago than a five-star Four Seasons that was built 20 years ago. And if we blow that, right, that's the time where people get sick again. We re-up cholestyramine well call, clear out biotoxin, and, and everyone's healthy again. So it's a 100% treatable, curable disease that can come with relapse if you get major re-exposure to buildings. But we take an empowered, not panicked approach to SIRS in our family, and we project that onto the universe because panic doesn't heal things. I don't know if you heard this, but I'm waiting for panic to work to change something. All it does is stresses out yourself and your family members. So, so if we get relapse and SIRS, no big deal. We go back to our clean home that we worked our tail off to get, go back to our clean office, take our cholestyramine reset. Once in a while, you need to re- reboot vasoactive intestinal peptide or the last step of the Shoemaker protocol, the VIP. So that's, that's my story and that's my street cred. And that's one of the reasons I understand when people have a hard time with taking cholestyramine or, but the biggest obstacle to SIRS for sure is getting diagnosed. Right. Tied for first place is getting to clean building. All right. So, so that's it. The Shoemaker protocol, knock on wood, has never failed. Mm-hmm. Not once has the Shoemaker protocol failed. What happens is people are not fully integral with step one, remove patient from biotoxin exposure. Mm-hmm. And we don't blame or shame them on that. It's, it's, it can be very expensive to get a clean place. You can hire a shoddy mitigator. You can hire an an inspector that didn't call out. We need to do some destructive sampling of that buckled wood in your bathroom floor, right? And then there's the husband who does it. I don't want to do an $18,000 crawl space. I want a boat this year, right? And then we say, hey, dude, do you ever want date night again with your wife? Do you want to go on fun camping trips? Do you want a wife who's in memory care or hanging out with you, right? And if you, if you want, if you want those date nights and you want uh, a wife who's athletic and productive and can be a mom or professional aspirations come through, then you're going to listen to what I have to say, because SIRS will not only ruin your wife's life, it'll ruin your whole family's life, right? We know there's a higher divorce rate in SIRS families. It's not much different than families with special needs kids. It's hard work, dedication, but it's treatable. This is a curable disease. As long as step one, remove patient from biotoxin exposure is accomplished. What I find interesting is for SIRS basically affects everything, right? Because it's, it's the brain and then it affects everything downstream, but so many people are diagnosed with all the downstream things. And so how do we start? I I know that we just talked about the symptom list. So that's definitely one thing to kind of take a look at. What's tricky about that list is for people that eat meat only carnivore, it kind of band-aids a lot of the symptoms because they're eating such a low inflammatory diet. And so they're like, oh, I did suffer from that. Or no, I don't really suffer from that anymore. And so that one bit is a little tricky, but how do we know the symptoms of mold? Um, how should we maybe consider even looking down this avenue of why I may not be feeling well? Yeah, well, I was so psyched to get invited to your podcast because food is always part of the story. Right. It is always part of the story. In a celiac case, it's 100% of the story. In other right. cases, it's 10% of the story, right? And uh, you nailed it. And I'm going to talk about something called the functional medicine hook. So what the carnivore cure does in, in, in what we've seen in patients is a radical reduction in inflammation yeah. from food and gut sources, right? And you were schooling me the other day on all of the new things and plants that makes total sense. We are living in a world of biological warfare, right? Mm-hmm. Like the grape doesn't want to get eaten by the bacteria, the fungus, and, 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 and we have tannins for that. And Uh, plants have all of these ways to say, get off me. I'm just trying to thrive and survive and and throw out some next of kin seeds and and keep going. And you were telling, teaching me um, way more than, than lectins and basically plant warfare, right? And that can be triggering in certain people and not in others. In SIRS, you crash MSH. And if I put my tongue on the inside of my cheek, that's mucosa. 
and mucosal lines, the nasal passage, the gastrointestinal system from the lips all the way out your hiney is, is your GI system, skin, vaginal wall and women pulmonary, right? You can get leaky lung in, in, in case of COVID that's all mucosa and MSH animates those, right? So those people who have strong integral mucosal barriers, you know, I also teach for Apex and, and hang out with Dr. Karazi and, and his neuroendocrine immune of mucosal immunity shows the research on glutathione, probiotics, and short chain fatty acids, all also participating in mucosal barriers, vitamin A and D as well. But you can do all that. And if your MSH crashed, right. still is not working, right? But people who have all that intact, they can handle all these different foods. They have intact tight junctions in their gut wall. They have bolstered probiotics and, and, and they're able to tolerate fiber and their, those probiotics are producing short chain fatty acids to dampen local uh, inflammation, so on and so forth. But then you say, huh, is this TGF beta one low? Is this MMP nine low? Is this C4A low because they're doing carnivore cure and they're also on liposomal glutathione and CBD and fish oil and vitamin D, all of which lower the inflammatory cytokines of SIRS, right? And that's why I call it the functional medicine hook in the sense that when we treat with just modalities and supplement loading, not diagnosing underlying causes, patient feels better, but not resolved. So God bless taking people from an F to a C plus when they're about to off themselves. Right. And, and that was my three big things of SIRS. It was depression, suicidal ideation and severe brain fog. Yeah. And I was in the middle of a charmed life with no um, circumstantial evidence to say you should go jump off a cliff. Right. My brain was on fire right. and it would tell me weird things. Right. It would say, you know, it's not, this isn't that great. You know, why would you want to be around? It's so odd because I have such a zest for life. And that's right. what neuroinflammation does. So uh, these kind of modalities will dampen inflammation. That's a good thing. They do not correct downstream neuroendocrine immune failure from hypothalamus collapse. So your ADH doesn't correct with any of those ideas. Your MSH doesn't correct. Your vascular endothelial growth factor doesn't correct. So, so the downstream, the DHEA and testosterone doesn't correct. That libido is still in the trash uh, in our SERS men and, 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 and even more so women. So the way you look at it is you do clustered symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, clustered symptoms even picks that up. Usually it's just not as dramatic. Like a cluster of symptoms on someone who's never seen a Judy or never seen a good funk med practitioner, they're like 27 out of 37, 22 out of 30. I had a 35 out of 37, right? 13 out of 13 positive clusters. We see that all day long. They're going to be more like eight or 12. Um, and in Dr. Shoemaker's healthy controls, it was two or less of the 37 symptoms. Who's not going to answer yes to like fatigue, right? Like you could be totally healthy. Your kid had an earache last night. And, and you are up all night and you say, yeah, I have fatigue, right? Who's, who's not going to answer yes, some like tingling. And they could have had, you know, a leg fracture playing basketball and they, they have a little bit of nerve damage, you know? So the, the cluster symptoms helps, but the strict diagnostic criteria for SIRS WDB, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, secondary to water damage building is you have water damage building exposure, right? So, and that's funny because People say, no, I've never been in a water damage building. Right. And then you hear about their frat house that totally flooded, poopy water back up, and they just mopped it up, threw some bleach on it, and threw a party in that basement that night, right? right? And you're like, that, just so you know, that's water damage, right? Um, so you have to know how to be a good investigator when you're interviewing environmental. Mm -hmm. There's also things like they went on a mission trip to Africa, and they ate grouper. Grouper is infamous for having ciguatera uh, biotoxin poisoning, right? They, I had a woman who I would have sworn she was mold illness and she was a Boulder teacher and her hurts me tests on her house was totally normal. And I said, where do you spend your summers? Lake Winnipesaukee in New Hampshire. I, I put Lake Winnipesaukee cyanobacteria into Google and Lake Winnipesaukee is riddled with algae blooms biotoxin producing algae blooms. I asked her, how do you recreate there? 
she takes a paddleboard to all the coves. Oh. So then I called the professor, the PhD at UNH, University of New Hampshire, and he he's studying cyanobacteria in Lake Winnipesaukee. <laughs> and he said, you know who you should really talk to is Dr. Stommel at Dartmouth. And if you put Stommel, Dartmouth, cyanobacteria, ALS, who's studying higher rates of Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, in cyanobacteria watersheds. So that's all we know so far is people who live around cyanobacteria watersheds have high rates of ALS than people who are not. And he's collecting teeth and hair and skin from dead ALS patients. And he doesn't know about Dr. Shoemaker's work yet. Dr. Shoemaker doesn't know about his work. So I'm going to be connecting these guys to see if we can do something for this stupid, violent ALS disease. Right. Is ALS uh, based in SIRS? We don't know yet. But these are the things we need to figure out. So, so when people are, are, are going through, like, does it, could this person be SIRS? If you're doing everything right and they go from an F to a C plus, but they don't go to an A plus, you're, that's as far as you got with diet, lifestyle, nutraceutical loading, right? And you might have a SIRS case there. Yeah. You did a history on their travel. You're looking for cyanobacteria. Did they grow up with the red tides? We are not Lyme happy. There are true Lyme endemic areas like the Northeast and where you are. Someone's born their whole life in Colorado. We have Rocky Mountain spotted fever, but we don't have Lyme here, right? And, and I'm still waiting for someone to show a Colorado tick bite that was Lyme. Doesn't mean it's not coming, but you know, you really do a good history and remain objective. Leave your po 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 politics, leave your emotions, um, leave your subjectivity, leave your own healthcare narcissism. Whatever you went through, don't project it onto your right. patient. Remain hyper objective and challenge your own diagnosis. And I'm going to tell you why I love Dr. Shoemaker so much is because me and my family would still be sick without him. Right. And he's not easy to learn from. He's intimidating. He's rough. He's gruff. But that guy is like a crab in that he has a hard shell and a mushy soft center that never gave up on the patient, including right. those sick fishermen in 1996, 97, where he first discovered the biotoxin pathway off the stereo poisoning in the Chesapeake Bay. So why I love that man is a hundred reasons over, but to this day, the person who challenged, is it mold more than anyone on the entire planet is the guy who discovered the biotoxin pathway, Richie Shimek, right. right? So there's an objectivity you need in your interviewing and you're looking for biotoxin exposure. You're looking for a, a cluster symptoms fail, and then you're looking for a failed VCS, but the visual contrast sensitivity that you do such a good job educating your listeners on that had in Peg DeTulio's office in New Hampshire, a 50% fail in surge cases, a 5% fail in uh, healthy controls because she does half primary care, half SERS. So, so if you, if you pass the VCS, that's, that doesn't mean you don't have SERS, right? right? It's if you fail the VCS, we're going to track the VCS. And once you're out of a dirty building and on enough weeks of cholestyramine, your eyes, your optic nerve can actually now see contrast better. Yes. And you pass the VCS. If you get back into a water damaged building within hours, you will fail the VCS again. Yeah. And that's because the inflammation messes with the optic nerve. So you can't see contrast blurred lines, basically. So that's kind of how we go about what's a real SERS case. And, and, um, are we just mold happy? Right. And, and, and that's so important because fads catch wildfire yeah. in holistic and integrated medicine. And there is a strict diagnostic criteria right. and peer reviewed published shoemaker protocol for treating this resolvable illness. And then there's everything else. And I won't, I won't make fun of everything else, but it doesn't get patients better. And if you remember, I'm in charge of your time, money, and energy. So we're not going to go doing uh, non-validated testing. We're not going to go say, hey, we can treat this with zeolite and, and glutathione, right? Now, I use naturopathic medicine to pad and complement the Shoemaker protocol so that people can tolerate their well colon, tolerate their cholestyramine. So, so that's real. You know, I use all those naturopathic tricks to make sure they can get through the protocol. Yeah. So many thoughts of everything you brought up. Um, I work with a lot of the meat only carnivore community that have tried it for four months, six months, and they are not getting the results that everyone else in the community says 
that they get. Granted, they get low inflammation and they notice certain things benefit, but then they stall. And so then they work with me. And a lot of times there's certain things that they're struggling with. And I started seeing them. And one is the omega threes are really low. Um, and then a lot of them are str struggling with hormonal issues. So they will be working with a, a separate functional doctor. That's like, you're low in DHEA, you're low in testosterone. You need to supplement that and after working with enough of them, my gut was, it's not that like, and that's when I started digging into, um, I don't even remember how I found Dr. Shoemaker, but it made so much sense. So there was one particular client where her doctor was advocating for her to get on DHA and testosterone. And then I said, I think you should actually test your MSH or MMP9. And her doctor was like, oh, that's a lot of woo woo stuff. And anyway, yeah. so she decided to go against her doctor and test and she has the haplotype, she has mold. And yeah. it was just so unfortunate because in that moment, she was just about to go on to testosterone medication when she doesn't now she's been on cholestyramine she's lost a lot of the weight that she, she wasn't able to lose on carnivore and now everything's healing she passed the vcs test recently and just so many powerful things and for eight months um, that i was working with her she was getting frustrated with maybe carnivore meat only isn't the diet for me but I don't know any other diet to go back to, but I'm not fully healing. And then once we found this, everything is healing. And I know she is more of a unicorn perfect story, but it's just, I see it now. And so when people are like, oh, I struggle with candida. How are you struggling with candida two years into a meat only elimination diet? Um, totally. Right. And, and it's, um, and still struggling with hormone issues. And while all of these people want to do like Dutch hormone tests and other hormones, I'm always like, I think you might want to test for serious and people are still hesitant because yeah. it's not, and one it's, do I want to open this can of worms, right? right? Where I have to fix the house. I'm diagnosed with this certain genetic type, but there's a consistent people where they're not losing weight. They're leptin resistant, no matter yeah. what diet they do. The other sign is they're not able to balance their electrolytes. So they do the hair mineral test and they're like, maybe it's the hair minerals that are imbalanced. Maybe I need more salt, maybe. And then they test their ADH osmolality and it's imbalanced. And totally. so I think, um, I'm really glad to have found Dr. Shoemaker's work and even having you on, because I think a lot of people that come to carnivore and meat only diet, they're so unwell that they're willing to eat only meat for the rest of their lives. And when yeah. that doesn't even fully work initially, there is benefits, of course, because you're lowering inflammation in the body with the diet. But after a while, when they start stalling, then again, they're back into maybe I'm never going to get better. Maybe this is my lot in life. And once I started realizing that Sears is actually a legitimate thing to try, I have over 10 clients that have tested positive. And now they're starting the journey to truly get to healing. I, I have to counter a couple points because okay. you just nailed it. And I want to bring some enlightenment to your brilliant experience. Okay. So you and I got on the phone and we connected immediately. Right. And I think the reason we connect on a very deep level is the number one tenant to healing is honesty. The number one tenant to healing is honesty. So it's not, if you can't hang with that, you shouldn't be a healer, regardless of your art, right? And, and you have to pay debt every day to the pain of truth, yes. right? We have doctors who can't tell people they can't eat gluten. They, they literally like, that's difficult for them, right? right? If you're there, there's no way you're going to screen for SIRS. Right. These, these providers would rather talk to their grandmother about their sex life than bring up the idea you might have chronic inflammatory response syndrome, right? right? And, and we connected immediately because you were so objective in your thinking. You were so sincere in, I want to figure this out for my clients. I, I want them to graduate. And you were so clean about, I know carnivore uh, helps. I'm not insecure about that. I don't have feelings of inadequacy about that. What happens when it doesn't completely help? I don't want to leave these clients hanging. And that's called integrity. And you have it in spades. And there's, you're, you're welcome. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, because it is not a unicorn that gets better with the shoemaker protocol it is every single patient that accomplishes the shoemaker protocol and the ones who don't become unicorns yet are on the other side of the fence in a dirty building there's still an exposure right or they didn't get taught or supported on how to tolerate well called cholestyramine right. which is a lot less common than you think but very real right it's a it's it's a miracle medicine that saved my family's life and it's drying it's very yin deficient 
Uh, it, it's, it's a little gritty. And you're dealing with people who have yin deficient mucosal lining. They're already like dehydrated, right? They already have low ADH when they drink water, their cells don't hold on to water. So they're these dehydrated, broken down, chronically ill. And then you're like, let me give you a little sandpaper medicine and see if it just gets tolerated perfectly by your gut, right? So we have an in-house nutrition department that helps really fluff up that gut wall to, to tolerate that stuff. But the number one tenant to healing is honesty, right? And what happens with me when, when a doctor says, Blah, 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 blah. I, I literally introduced them to the 40 peer reviewed reproducible published papers of Dr. Shoemaker. And I point out, cause I know how busy we all are three or four of them that I want them to read. Right. One of the papers is vasoactive intestinal peptide restores gray matter, nuclei atrophy, right? What I just said is we are regrowing shrunken brains in roots and branches and have pre and post brain MRI with neuroquant to prove it. So I'm not muscle testing. Hey, your brain is better. Hey, you know, I have hard data to say this is back. Right. And that paper usually blows people's minds, but then they just want to give VIP. They want to cherry pick the protocol, right, right. right? The VIP only works if you're out of building, you took enough cholestyramine to drain the remaining reservoir of biotoxin out of your body. And you don't have Marcon's, the stubborn uh, staph infection in the schnoz that is also biotoxin forming. Right. So, so people, I, I say, all right, just checking up on, did you read the papers? Yeah. Let's talk sirs. Crickets. Right. And again, I don't need them to be a shoemaker certified doc, right? And, and for those of you listening, there's two websites that host Dr. Shoemaker's work. There's survivingmold.com and then there's sirsx.com, C-I-R-S-X.com. And we work collaboratively. There's, there's a collegiate relationship between these two. SirsX is where we're hosting the, the Shoemaker Conference in end of April. There is a $10 a month member fee for SirsX for patients and clients that gets you access to the entire website. There's a thousand bibliographies on there of all the papers we, we use to have figured this out, mostly Dr. Shoemaker. There's all the old recorded conferences on there. I'm going to actually be doing tolerating the Shoemaker protocol mm -hmm. as a one hour presentation pre sirs X conference. So I can let you know about that. Okay. The majority of that is dealing with dryness and constipation from well call and cholestyramine. Right. right. And you really opened my eyes to really thinking about, I mean, for years as nature paths, we used high dose lecithin to, to move bioflow. And, but you were really into your phosphatidyls the other day on the phone. And, and when we're using lipotropic factors or bilamin or phase 2.5 bile support, or just some good old lecithin, like, like we're doing what you said, but I, I really went back to my biochemistry on bioflow and, and those phosphatidyls are, are, are critical for bioflow. And I'm so looking forward to learning from you about there's no fiber in carnivore. So I'm still right. trying to wrap my head about like expanding stretch receptors in the colon and, you know, there's fat. So you get bile ejection fraction, right? right? So, so I really look forward to all that, but, but, but to, to close out your question, you have goody two shoe overachieving doctors like myself, but also in the conventional model who we, we all are overachievers. We all want to help people. And that's how we started. Uh, a medical doctor has to pass their MCAT, do hellacious amount of schooling, residency. They are beyond smart enough to do SIRS. They then go into a model where they're seeing 30 to 40 patients a day and have five to seven minutes with a patient, right? And they're in the middle of a gyne exam and Mrs. Smith asks about her uh, eczematous rash. And they say things like, well, keep an eye on that. And that just, that just happens to women your age. Let's talk about that next time, right? And they literally are burning out, feeling strangled by time and space, right? right? Then the number one thing that predicts what a medical doctor would do in peer reviewed research is what their peers are doing. So now you're back in eighth grade where if, if I don't suggest a statin, 
then Timmy's going to make fun of me, right? Even though the Journal of Nuclear Medicine just showed mild cognitive impairment converts quicker to dementia with lipophilic statins. Why isn't Hannity and, and Anderson Cooper talking about this stuff? Yeah. Tell you why 25% of their, uh, their ad revenue comes from pharma. So you're not allowed to talk doo-doo about big pharma. You can talk doo-doo about ivermectin, a generic that no one wants, right? But but you, you, you can, so, so this is what they're up against. They're up against peer pressure. They're up against time pressure, right? And they can't slow it down. My goal on my deathbed is to, to look myself in the mirror and said, you guys did it. You changed healthcare from what a patient has to why a patient has it, right? right? So, and that takes time, but there would be more time if we actually graduated people out of the healthcare system. Uh -huh. So what happens is they come in and it's like being alone at Home Depot and you can't find, you know, a bolt in aisle 13. You're like, help, help. No one helps you. You don't graduate and more patients come in. Right. Right. And no one leaves. Yep. So now we spend more wasted time, money and energy doing things topically and superficially and drug for symptom and nutraceutical for symptom. Right. Instead of drilling down for the underlying causes and actually graduating people out of healthcare. Right. So, so that's the pressures they all feel. All I want people to do quick environmental history, visual contrast and cluster symptoms. You can have a medical assistant or a nurse do that. Right. If you find that it's looking there, you can run the shoemaker labs or you can send to a shoemaker certified doc right. and say, I think you might have SIRS. I'm going to send you to a specialist in SIRS. Right. Just like I would send you to a nephrologist right. or, or a cardiologist for an echo, you know, where do you think the relationship with diet affects sears and then also i mean we touched a little bit about the inflammation but what about also you know autoimmune and hormone imbalances so let's start with hormone imbalances because you already mentioned it if you look at the biotoxin pathway and i went through the biotoxin pathway in 15 minutes it's getting posted on sirsx.com okay i think that's going to be available to anyone i don't think you need need to get behind the paywall but if you look at, if you just put into Google shoemaker biotoxin pathway, you'll get this huge diagram with arrows going everywhere and skiers, right? In the bottom right corner, you'll see reduced androgens, right? And what happens is when you inflame the hypothalamus and can't release MSH, you lose, um, uh, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis regulation, hypothalamus pituitary testicular axis regulation, hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis dysregulation. And this is why dysmenorrhea and squirrely cycles and infertility can, can be um, SIRS. Miscarriages can come from SIRS because of the anticardial lipin antibodies. Mm -hmm. And the only two people I know who run anticardial lipin antibodies and autoimmune attack on your red blood cells is the OBGYN and the Shoemaker certified doc. Mm -hmm. Right. And in Mold Warriors chapter three, Dr. Shoemaker talks about that Amish woman that everyone thought was Lyme because she's in Pennsylvania, Lyme country. And she had 13 pregnancies, nine miscarriages, four full term. She had really elevated anticardiolipin antibodies, which totally normalizes with Shoemaker protocol. Right. right. So we might say, hey, let's do, let's get through SIRS. And then you guys go from making babies. I don't want there to be a tragic uh, miscarriage here. So that's where you get with the hormonal dysregulation. And I'm going to tell you that if the DHEA crashes, DHEA specifically, you have to supplement with DHEA for life. So the DHEA will bring it back up. But as soon as you take people off DHEA, it goes right back down. In women, when you get DHEA to Dale Bredesen levels, which is 350 to 430 on lab DHEA sulfate, that DHEA re reservoir fills and then spills into their testosterone. So men have a separate uh, testosterone producing factory, the testes. So it doesn't, that trick doesn't work in men. So you fill DHEA in women and you get a two for one special. And we love our compounders. We use them day in and day out, but you, you can save money not needing testosterone from the compounder because you're getting it off D, uh, DHEA. Once in a while, my, my full prescribing nurse practitioner will do testosterone with women still, mm -hmm. but the majority, the libido came up, the, the desire to work out, the desire to recover from a workout, the desire to get in that garage and clean it this weekend, like you said you were going to, uh, all that comes back because DHEA and testosterone enhance dopamine mean and acetylcholine binding in the brain, which is your ambition and drive, feelings of self-worth, hopefulness, ability to finish tasks, decisiveness, part of your libido, memory, mental acuity, and bowel motility. So all that comes indirectly off 
Step five, the Shoemaker protocol, correct androgens. So what you're supposed to do, and because we don't see the DHEA come up, we start correcting DHEA straight out of the gate, but you're supposed to say, how did we do with clean building, cholestyramine, eradication of Marcons, right? Most of the time we still need to correct DHEA. Usually the estrogen progesterone in a reproductive years woman comes back online. So that, that's, that, that's pretty cool to see. If the SIRS patient is young enough, like my boys, my older who's flexing on the household doesn't have a problem with his testosterone on lab, right? So he's a little Neanderthal bringing, building frontal cortex and prefrontal cortex brake pedals so he can be a good, healthy male in society, right? So that's hormones. So the, the hormones one thing, always one thing. crash. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the DHEA, and if you eat a meat only carnivore diet and have a high fat version, which supports the, the cholesterol pathways, it can yeah. support DHEA. So as yeah. you are doing the SERS protocol with a meat only diet, which yes. basically respects the low amylose diet, um, then you are giving more nutrition to also go to the pathways to break yes. down into DHEA and testosterone. So that yes. can also be an option for your patients. Um, in order to increase DHA without all that supplementation. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And tracking our carnivore patients, it improves, but doesn't get to Dale Breda's and end of Alzheimer's levels. Okay. Right. And the reason I follow that so intensely is because DHEA at 350 to 430 DHA sulfate on lab, 400 to 500 on for males on lab is a huge way to prevent atrophy. In the body. Uh, okay. And so again, the carnivore totally improves it, but we're about taking it to perfection because gotcha. it's so cost effective. It's so easy to do. And it's potently anti-aging. And if we just take a minute and say, what are these sex steroids about? DHEA, testosterone, androsine, dione, estrogen, progesterone, pregnenolone. Yeah. Erections are great. Vaginal moisture is great. Triceps are great. These hormones are first and foremost, anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm. immune modulating anabolics, right. anti-inflammatory, immune modulating anabolics. They rejuvenate, regenerate, resuscitate, recuperate anti-age tissues, mm -hmm. right? So when someone tells you, Mrs. Smith, you have thinning bones, right? And take your Fosamax, right? Get eye blindness and necrosis of the jaw, right? And we know that the bisphosphonates, Fosamax in the peer reviewed literature come with more fractures. Mm -hmm. They come with more hip fracture and more lumbar fracture. That's published by conventional doctors, right? Why didn't the FDA take it off the market? Because the FDA is evil. No, because there's another study that shows you get one year of longevity if you take that drug. But I'm going to tell you how you're going to spend that year because I worked at Fraser Meadows Retirement Community for 10 years. You're spending in bed with a hip fracture, right? So the, if, if Fosamax was the only way to hold bones, I might even get behind it. Right. Osteopenia osteoporosis is a disease first and foremost of inflammation. Interleukin-6 is burning down your bones. Second, a disease of lack of anabolism. Mm -hmm. Where are the sex steroids to rebuild, rejuvenate, recuperate the bones? And third, a disease, uh, do I have enough calcium, magnesium, boron, zinc, et cetera, et cetera, right? Of which you all get from carnivore diet because like a multivitamin when you're eating high quality meats, right? So, so we say uh, to them, if your bones are thinning, everything is thinning. You're going to see that premature atrophy on a neuroquant. You're going to see your lean muscle mass go away. You're going to see your vaginal wall go away. You're going to see your breast tissue start to shrink. You're going to see your gut lining start to thin, right? There's a, a pilot trial on Crohn's patients. Ready for this? 200 milligrams of DHEA put six out of seven Crohn's patients into remission. Wow. Oh, right. And I literally have an email out to the, the primary investigator because they also said, and the treatment is well tolerated with no side effects. And I want to know how, because you start getting the 35 to 50 milligrams of DHEA. If you're not preconditioning the liver, we usually use Apex, Metacrine DX to pre-treat the liver so that the DHEA isn't making people agitated and growing billy goat beards. It's the toxic metabolites mm -hmm. as it's running through liver gallbladder. And we all know SERS patients have congested boggy liver gallbladders. They got swamp liver because biotoxins aren't getting cleared. Right. So they, and, and that's until they get through the protocol, their, their livers don't work that well. So, so for me, I'm saying, oh my gosh, could we use DHEA like prednisone? Mm -hmm. 
prednisone is a powerful anti-inflammatory, but it's catabolic. It destroys tissue while right. it puts out fire. DHEA is a profound anti-inflammatory, but it remodels, rebuilds, and regrows, regrows tissues, right? So everything you're saying with, with sex steroids is phenomenal, exciting times, but so many of the patients we take on second got to a C plus with their bioidentical hormone doc, like, like you're suggesting the nutrition often wasn't addressed, like you're suggesting, and maybe they miss SIRS. Right. But are you going to feel better when you miracle load sex steroids? Hell yes. You think that doctor's a champ, right? But we want to go all the way to the top, right? right? We want to get back to a B plus to a plus living. Now, the other one is digestion. So what we see in SIRS patient is MSH crashes. And this is not published yet in the inner circle of shoemaker certified docs. No one has seen a SIBO case with a normal MSH. That doesn't mean all SIBO cases are SIRS. Right. I'm saying exactly what I said. Every single SIBO case we've seen has had a low MSH, right? And SIBO is not a diagnosis. Sorry, naturopaths. It's a symptom. It's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You have to say, but Why? small right. intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You have to be that annoying four-year-old girl or boy that says, but why mommy, but why, but why, but why SIBO, right? We know that you could have autoimmune attack on your parietal cells and have low hydrochloric acid. Right. We know that bacteria and fungus overgrowth hate acid. You need to set the pH of the gut with hydrochloric acid to make it inhospitable for bacterial overgrowth. We know they might not have functioning gallbladders and we know that all SIBO is swamp gut, right? Motility helps move the gut that could have a concussion history and brain gut axis isn't motiling. In that situation, we actually use constitutional hydrotherapy and old naturopathic therapy where you put sine wave pads literally over the um, motor enteric complex and you jumper cable the motor enteric complex to wake up the guts. And that takes about 10, 20 treatments, real blue collar medicine, a lot of work on the patient and the provider, but magical. We know that T3 thyroid could be low, not moving the guts. We know maybe, maybe SIRS is a, is a cause. It could just be a correlation. It could be an aftermath. We don't know, but we know that nutrition is always part of the case. And, and we've had people with raging migraine headaches. They are hundred percent confirmed SIRS and they haven't gotten to clean building and, and well color cholestyramine yet because maybe my nurse practitioner is backed up or something like that. And their headaches are gone just doing anti-inflammatory diet, right? Mm -hmm. Still have to treat their SIRS or their atrophy is going to continue, right? And they're going to still be in memory care. They'll just get there slower because right. they, remo they removed one huge part of the total load nutrition, right? So when you're dealing with a SIRS case, it's always SIRS plus, but sometimes it's just SIRS and clean up the diet. Mm. Sometimes it's SIRS and a raging sleep apnea. Right. What happens when you do that all night? You cut off oxygen right. to which cells? Every single cell in your body. How is that going to present as a multi-system, multi-symptom illness, right? If you stack a hardcore sleep apnea next to a hardcore SIRS, next to a hardcore hypothyroid, next to a hardcore low blood pressure, next to a hardcore hypoglycemic, you're going to get about 90% overlap in symptoms, right? Which one is it? Right. That's where data saves the day. And yeah. sometimes it's all five and you have to treat all five, right? And that's why we go big on two hour uh, interview on all things in your life. At the end of that two hour visit, I have a differential diagnosis. Here's the list of potential underlying causes. I don't have a phone line to God or a crystal ball. I don't know which it is. I, I have too much, too, too much subjectivity if I try and muscle test you. So I'm going to do validated data from things like peer reviewed published protocols adopted by the government accountability offices in 2010, Dr. Shoemaker's work, vindicated, validated. And I'm going to see you four to six weeks later when all the data is in. And I'm going to say, this is the cause of your migraines, right? Because I had a hundred ideas in my brain and it's usually going to be seven, 10, 15 of those ideas are all contributing to the inflammatory load that's lighting up your microglia and going, you got a migraine again, right? So, and then at that point, it's a six to 12 month journey where you're going to partial out some of the work and, and, and that's a process, right? The biggest process for the SERS patient is getting the building clean. Okay. So once in a while we get this New York family is like, we got mold. We, 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 we did our labs and we're moving to Colorado into a new build. 
and we're coming to Roots and Branches to see you guys. And we go, oh my gosh, what a lovely afternoon. We just have to do steps two through 12 of the Shoemaker right. Protocol. You don't have to deal with step one, the biggest pain in the keister, yes. remove patient from biotox exposure. And believe me, there's no way in hell I'm doing this disease if it wasn't for Dr. Shoemaker's strict diagnostic criteria. People who are using flaky, uh, unvalidated labs and weird stuff like the gumption or stupidity, what if they're wrong? What if it's right. really not SIRS and they just had that family spend $75,000 on fixing a building? You better be right, right? And, and the statistics on the diagnostic criteria of the Shoemaker protocol are beyond, right? right? They, they lock down. This is the story. And then you get through two, 300 cases and you're like, oh my gosh, they're all better. Right. They're all better, right? And, and our goal is we don't do codependency. We want you to write us that Christmas card and say, feeling better, see you never, right? And then we don't believe in abandonment. So in all reality, usually what happens is two, three years later, someone, you know, went to vacation to Hawaii and came back and um, Genevieve will usually say, you know, you take uh, 14 days of cholestyramine. If you're not uh, reset, then come in for some labs and then we'll just, we'll just see where you're at, you know? So that's kind of the empowered, not panicked yeah. approach. Right. If you're on a Facebook group where everyone's like, I'm so molded and I'm molded and I'm moldy and you're moldy or let's have a competition who's more brain dead, you're not going to get better. Right. It's time to get to a shoemaker certified doctor who can do the strict diagnostic criteria and have experience and lo know local mitigators, local inspectors, make sure the building's right and, and graduate you from this treatable but vicious disease. Yes. And I love that Dr. Shoemaker's blood work. It's really easy to, you can measure it, right? As much as you don't, if, if people question, oh, I don't know if this is really my illness. Well, you can track your MSH, your MMP9, TGF beta one, all yes. of those markers. And then you could retest after even taking cholestyramine, if you went through the protocol and you could see markers go down. So it's not just yeah. this. And that's the power, I think, of this whole protocol is the data is there and the protocol is really easy to follow. Sure, all the letters are confusing at first, but once you understand the process, it's actually quite easy to follow. And I think that's yep. a, the power of a lot of it. I love that you brought up the migraine. There's a lot of people in the carnivore community. They struggle with migraines. Um, there's people out there that recommend lots of salt. I have seen that help some people. But my question is, well, on a meat only diet, why are you still suffering from migraines and a little bit before your menses or like a certain thing will trigger you and you still struggle with it? Well, that's weird because on a meat only diet, you shouldn't be anymore. And so then I'm starting to wonder, is it a band aid? Is it SIRS, right? Because you're reducing your inflammation enough that you're not getting as many episodes, but you're still getting some, which then to me is not the root cause healing. And I'm always wondering. I wanted to talk a little bit about ERMI testing. So you're saying, can I say really quickly, yeah. a couple of things in migraine, just cause you're you. And I know that you're just based in honesty, right? So two other things aside from SIRS that are often underlying causes on migraine, hypoxia, okay. low oxygen okay. in the tissues, the looky ring. Uh, we have no financial relationship with any of these companies. Lookytech.com, L O O K W E T E C H, $149 ring mm -hmm. that you can put on your finger um, and download to your phone. And it'll tell you if you're dropping out in oxygen. That is constant oximetry. The circle ring, C I R C U L, is more of like a fitness ring that does constant oxygen monitoring. Okay. And then the Garmin, but you have to set it to the battery. The iWatch and the Oro, though I like some of what they're doing with their algorithms, unfortunately does not test constant oximetry. They do right. spot checks. Okay. Um, if you're going below 90%, you are having desaturations. Mm -hmm. You are cutting off oxygen and that is a cause of migraine. Mm -hmm. The other one is dental. So we had a Sears patient recently who had suicidal headaches. And I don't use that word lightly. There's two, right. three times a year where someone comes in and I see the look, they're not having thought they're close. Right. And we set him out for a 3d cone beam CT mm -hmm. and cause he had a sensitive tooth and, and the doctor was like, yeah, we'll just keep an eye on that. I was like, no, we're getting a 3d cone beam total tooth abscess pulled out the tooth four hours later, his migraines of 10 years are gone. Wow. And he, he did say, thank you. He goes, thanks for that. This is awesome. And then he quickly goes into, but I'm still really exhausted. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you have SIRS. We haven't even gotten started. And your hurts me. Ermies are a mess. So traditional x-ray 
is a, a, like a piece of paper, right? It's two dimensional, mm. right? Even if it's a fancy panoramics machine, it's still two dimensional, right? And it misses one third of dental infection. So one out of all three patients are leaving the dentist's office with dental infection that was missed on a panoramics. A 3D cone beam turns that um, piece of paper 90 degrees and stacks. Right. And builds a 3D model of your bone where infection can run, but it can't hide. So we get those through Colorado Gum Care for 300 bucks with a radiologist read. Don't wow. get a dental image that doesn't have the doctor put their word on paper, right? For some reason, dentists think they should do x-rays and not write them up, right? And just imagine I order a brain MRI and someone just hands me a CD. I'm not a radiologist. Right. I need a doctor to report. Just imagine you got a transvaginal ultrasound or a thyroid ultrasound and they didn't report. So if you get a 3D combium CT, make sure it comes with a written report. And that's so other doctors can weigh in on, yeah, you should definitely, even though it's five grand, you need to get that dental work done. You know, so those are two hidden sources, SIRS. And then I want to be clear with you on that premenstrual migraine, serotonin drops out. Right. Uh, second uh, in, in luteal phase of your cycle, the second two weeks. And all of our, our migraine drugs, Immutrex, these are all 5-HT1 serotonin agonists, mm -hmm. right? So the other thing I look for, is there anything that's, that's reducing serotonin, right? Low vitamin D, vitamin D enhances serotonin in the brain, oxygen, hypothyroid, right? So we're not SIRS happy. We are a mystery illness. I am a lean, mean diagnosing machine right? That doesn't bring in political or emotional baggage. I'm not anti-vax. I'm not pro-vax. I am pro-patient. Discuss every single patient's individual immune system and the pros and cons of a gray area conversation of, can you completely avoid COVID and sit in a basement? If you get COVID, do you think we have you or you think you do well with the vaccine? And, 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 and those are individual immune system conversations. And so we really want to say, SIRS is definitely a cause of headaches, no joke, hardcore, but so is hypothyroid and low blood pressure and, 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 and a myriad of other things. So and I have a client things. that did a lot of gut healing. He did the 3d comb and then figured out there's a bunch of parasites living in his mouth and, um, parasites can even affect like serotonin levels. So I, I fully am there with you. I think if you've ever and if, had a, and if a dentist is like, it's going to be $75,000, maybe you get a second opinion. Right. Because because right. we see like in the biological dentist community, which I love, but sometimes they're just like they go too hardcore and they don't have prag pragmatism about finances or, or whatever the, the deal is. And sometimes it's just because they're perfectionists. It's not necessarily like there's, you know, a greedy thing there. They just want to address everything, you know, course, and, and, and you can get you can always get a second opinion on that. But but tooth abscess, failed root canal, gingivitis, periodontal disease are radically inflammatory about ERMI testing and then just yeah. about finances. So um, if you could talk a little bit about why ERMI testing is the gold standard, not the like um, air swabs or the, um, the yeah. little Petri dishes. And then, yeah, you bet. So, so the ERMI, the environmental relative moldiness index was uh, Steve Vesper of the EPA created that technology and it's QPCR, which stands for quantitative polymerase chain reaction. You're mm -hmm. amplifying the DNA of mold. Right. So you're basically saying you can run, but you can't hide. And uh, the ERMI reporting is awful. So the ERMI reporting sets relative moldiness index of a home, the, the, the average 50% moldy home is a zero, right? A zero should be a zero. Right. <laughs> There's no molds, right? So the, the ERMI report is horrible and can, can really come with lots of false positives, negatives. The ERMI data, the raw numbers are extraordinary because they can tell you the personality of microbial uh, impact on a home. And Dr. Shoemaker created the hurts me off of the ERMI. And that's Dr. Shoemaker's humor. It hurts me, but it stands for H-E-R-T-S-M-I or health effects roster type mycotoxins and inflammation species too. And Dr. Shoemaker created that roster, that scoring system, because there was too many false positives and too many false negatives with the ERMI still, even though the ERMI was better than air sample and gravity plates and all that kind of stuff. And the reason 
uh, and a false positive is saying, hey, the, the house is, is not safe for you to live in and it is fine. A false negative is the house is fine and you're getting sick as heck from it. So the five molds that get pulled off the ermy to do the hurts me are the aspergillus penicillioides, aspergillus versicolor, ketonium, stachybotrys, and malemia. Aspergillus penicillioides versicolor and malemia are xerophilic molds. They're dry tolerating molds. So they only need humidity to amplify and grow. So this could be families taking a shower on a bathroom without exhaust fans. This could be a swamp cooler, which are infamous. I call it the devil cooler in Arizona, where they, whose idea was it to take air in and, and humidify it and pump it into dry Colorado homes and make them aspergillus grow factories, right? This is crazy. You could have, hey, it's Colorado, 50 marijuana plants were growing in the basement uh, before you moved in. Those are all high humidity things, a crawl space without a vapor barrier that can, that can promote the growth of these aspergillus, penicillioides, aspergillus versus colonia. Ketomium and stachy are hydrophilic molds. They are water needing, water loving molds. So when you see stachy and ketomium go up, something got wet, something got wet, wet. So what Dr. Shoemaker saw is if you had a Hertz me score of 10 or less, there's a 98.3% likelihood you're going to get better when you move back in that building. That's safe enough for you. 1.7% of the people still got sick in that building, but it's a good baseline. There's an art to reading it hurts me, meaning if you have a score of six, but that six is coming exclusively from a stacky botrys of 37, you have to go mm, skeptical hippo eyes on that. And yeah, say, maybe I'm missing something here, right? So, and that's where a good shoemaker certified doctor can help with the art uh, of that. So air samples. So they only go down to three microns. Molds go down to 0.1 microns. Mm -hmm. So you can miss things in there. They don't speciate. So they don't tell you aspergillus penicillioides, aspergillus first color, they say aspen. Right, they, they, right. So, so they don't speciate. The World Health Organization 2009 paper on mold and dampness said they're an acceptable method if you sample for multiple hours, over multiple days, over multiple weeks. So if you're Oprah, and you can afford, uh, you know, inspection trailers outside of your house and have an, ins uh, an inspector keep changing cassettes, maybe you can get accurate readings. They also catch the wispy molds. Ketomium and stachybotrys sit on horizontal surfaces like uh, jelly jam. They're more stick, uh, sticky and dense. They don't wisp around. If you see stacky or ketomium on an air sample, woo, that is a house you're not getting better at, right? And then um, they don't pick up cell wall fragments. Mm -hmm. So someone could fog a home. And what happens when you fog a home is you take a cell wall and, and think of a circle in your mind's eye and then rupture it. Now draw that same circle with dashes. Those cell wall fragments are 300 to 500 times more stimulating to complement 4A rises than the intact wall, and they will not get seen on gravity plate or on air samples. So this is all the unintentional or intentional shyster sh shenanigans and charlatans where you had a gravity plate, someone fogged, and you put out a gravity plate the next day and no mold grows, right? There's no live spores. Those dead cell walls are going to make you 300 to 500 times more stimulated on your inflammatory responses. They don't get missed by qPCR. They don't get missed by the Ermi Swiffer cloth um, or the Hertz me Swiffer cloth. If you're tight on dough, you get the uh, Hertz me because we're really looking for those five immune reactive molds. If someone has cash and they're just sick as hell, but they're flush with cash, we get the Ermi because we like seeing the other molds because we know things about their personalities too. But the five most immunoreactive molds are on that Hurts Me roster. The other thing people need to know is we use the envirobiomics.com number seven on most okay. of our patients, because that includes a Hurts Me, mm -hmm. a Actinomycetes, which is a human skin derived bacteria that can drive SIRS. That's more about building maintenance, vacuuming. We put in Aeroasis Eye Adapt filters in, in, in those places. And then bacterial endotoxin. Bacterial endotoxin is endotoxin that comes off poop. So I'll give you some examples. Peach wraps are meant to be filled with water to prevent sewer gas from coming into your sink, into your shower, right? We had a peach wrap in our um, utility closet with 16 to 29% humidity in Colorado next to a boiler that dried out because no one's flossing or brushing teeth or doing dishes rinsing water down there. So it dried out and bacterial endotoxin, sewer gas was coming into our home. 
right? So, so, so you got to make sure all your P traps are full. If it's a shower that's not used in a 5,000 square foot home that there's that bathroom over there, you pour biodegradable RV antifreeze on there because it doesn't evaporate as easily. If you have old yeller, your 16 year old dog who's crapping in every corner of the house, that's a bacterial endotoxic source. Mm-hmm. And a patient the other day who uh, is in a small LA Los Angeles apartment. And I said, how many cats do you have? And she said seven. Cause on the zoom call, I could see seven cat carriers behind her. She has seven cats in a 400 square foot apartment. Wow. Right. How are you going to take care of that poop? Who's maintaining those kitty litters? You're going to spend your whole day cleaning that out, right? That could be a source of bacterial endotoxin. And then out here, we have a lot of mountain homes with uh, septic fields, and you can have failed septic dry bacterial endotoxin. That's so important because you could have a mold-free home having cortical gray atrophy. Your brain is getting destroyed from sewer gas, right? Wow. If you ever want to see a crazy story, you just put in um, Casey Middle School, Boulder sewer gas headaches. And you see in 2016, they did a old middle school remodel where they built onto it. And they thought all the teachers and students, about 50% of teachers and students were getting chronic headaches. And they flew in this guy, the feds flew in this guy to inspect the building. I got to sit down and meet him real sharp inspector. He could not find mold. It was a sewer gas leak. Uh, a sewer pipe broke underneath the school and everyone was getting SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, secondary to bacterial endotoxin, (sniffs) sniffing in poopy water. Lovely. So let's say people test their homes and then they find a not so great number for or me, hurts me, hurts me. And, but they don't have a lot of money, right? Even the testing requires a good, I mean, is that what do they do from there? Yeah. If you have all people on board and you have a confirmed SERS diagnosis, you have to beg, borrow, or steal your way to clean building. Okay. Right. And it's amazing how many people don't have a lot of money. And then I realize, oh, you're in a $900,000 Boulder home with $600,000 in equity. Right. Right. So I, I really challenge this don't have a lot of money idea. Larry Schwartz, one of our indoor environmental professionals at the 2016 Shoemaker Conference gave a talk on to move or not to move. We have a professional retired professional athlete I'm seeing right now who has a $4 million Boulder home, right? If they were to sell that, that's $240,000 in real estate fees, in realtor fees. It's 6% on a $4 million sale, right? And do that math, right? Yeah, it's, it's $240,000. How much of that home could they fix with two hundred forty thousand yeah. dollars? So that's an extreme example, but it gives it gives this to move or not to move, right? So when we did our home, I was not a middle class, upper middle class uh, person. I was a low middle class doctor doing good quality medicine, right? And we pulled a hundred thousand dollar home equity line of credit. We spent all of our sixty thousand dollars of savings. And then my dad gave us $10,000 to the kitchen because he felt so bad for us. My wife's dad matched him, his ego. And I want to help too. And he threw a 10 grand. Then my dad did a 10 grand in loan that he gets his fish oil and vitamin D and supplements for a lifetime. That's his payout. And then my father-in-law did another 10 G's. So we cobbled together the $200,000 mitigation remodel with a home equity line of credit. And that was like 400 bucks a month to pay that loan off, right? And then we, as as the house went up, we um, rolled that into a refinance. So my whole point is I'm not your financial planner, but where there's the will, there's a way, and you have to hold the line that you are not getting better until you get in a clean building, right? And that's why I'll often have, I'll record visits. Husbands are always allowed to be on the visit because they want them to know there is a strict, reproducible, peer-reviewed, published Mm -hmm. diagnostic criteria uh, discovered by Dr. Shoemaker, accepted by the Government Accountability Offices in 2010, and a strict peer-reviewed treatment protocol called the Shoemaker Protocol that will eradicate this illness in your loved one. And you're going to have to dig deep. You're going to have to beg, borrow, steal. Um, Then we have other things like um, church ladies coming over and having wine as they throw out uh, people stuff and help clean a home for things like actinomycetes, mm-hmm. right? They can't afford a professional cleaner to come in. So they use and rely on their community to do it. 
right? So I think the biggest problem with this is honestly the education, lack of sincerity and creativity to work through the issues. And then the other problem is people aren't screening for SIRS. So they spent $75,000, $100,000. Our most expensive patient to case, very affluent duty, spent $5 million on failing SIRS treatments and mold illness treatments with non shoemaker certified people. And he would panic buy these houses without any guidance on how to screen for them. And that's where most of the 5 million went is these lost assets, but hundreds of thousands of dollars in IV ozone and sauna purchases. And I'm sorry, you don't have a sauna deficiency, right? Saunas are a great additive modality that increase heat shock proteins, which are anti-inflammatory, but do not treat SIRS. Now, if you have bonus cash and can afford a sauna, go for it. Nothing wrong with it as a supplemental modality. It is not an underlying cause treatment. So what happens is patients come through and they've pissed away the money we need to work on clean building, right? And that's why I'm not rolling in it. I, I, I make a decent living, but I'm not the doc who's, who's cruising around in the new Lambo, you know? Um, this is blue collar medicine because right. you have to deal with the buildings, right? And the white collar medicine is Dr. Shoemaker's biochemical genius to, to figure out the, the medical protocol. But if you don't get the buildings right, it doesn't work. So it's just, we have patients, this, this topic breaks my heart because we have patients that I've diagnosed with SIRS five years ago that are still in SIRS. And that's because I've watched them squander and scatter time, energy, and money and not let us lead. And they're damaged in getting coached because so many coaches before have failed them. Right. Right. So our arrangement is you're Michael Jordan. I know you can dunk and shoot and dribble and pass. I'm Phil Jackson. We're down by three. You just did the most awesome dunk ever. And we lost the game. It's a two point play. Right. So I call the plays. You execute the place. We trust in your execution. Sure. But some people need a lot of support on, nope, 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 nope. Put your blinders on. You are going for clean building and the shoemaker protocol. Again, if the diagnosis is SIRS, right? Because they will listen to squirrely podcasts and all kinds of stuff. And, and the reason they're doing that is because the healthcare failed them, right? The healthcare system didn't get them diagnosed early. The healthcare system, that doctor that I said, check out SIRS. Here's some papers. They didn't read the paper. They didn't become aware. They didn't do a cluster symptoms. They didn't get diagnosed early. So they went and squandered all this time, money, and energy. And now we don't have the money to do things right. You know, in regards to, for your listeners, we are starting the Roots and Branches charity, Charitable Fund. This is a 501C that one of my patients who had fatalistic headaches um, that no longer has headaches, gone, not the tooth guy, a different guy. He donated $50,000 to start the fund and he wanted our essential workers. I might tear up our, our receptionist, our medical assistant to get bonused because even though we pay our workers about $5 an hour over uh, average rates, it, it's not enough to live on the front range. He was so impressed with their follow through and care. He and I sat down and I said, can we make this three arms, some bonusing for essential workers an endowment for uh, really broke SERS patients? We're not there yet, guys. I want to give this thing up to 500K before we start giving out money. And number three, research. And one of the research projects is we want to build sire wall houses, S is in sire instead of F is in fire, um, to have people come and live for three to six months while they're working through the shoemaker protocol and getting their own building dealt with right so so these are the projects I, this is a near and dear to story to my heart but i'm going right. to tell you most people can figure it out if they're educated right and they don't have any saboteurs right, right. it's not like they're fighting against their husband they're fighting against and again those husbands have a right to be pissed and agitated and angry because they're 75k in on worthless health care that didn't diagnose the patient and find underlying causes. They did modality band-aids. And, and again, something like diet, carnivore cure, always part of the problem. If you do carnivore cure and you don't have the wild graduation, there's more. Yeah. It's not that it was a bad idea, right? There's more. Right. So, so that's where the, the money can become a real issue. I've had clients where they moved several times. They keep doing the ERMI score and they they keep failing. Some of the homes are new builds. Some of them are just a year in and 
they got to a point where it was causing them so much stress. They were living in hotels for six months that they decided they're just not going to test the new build they moved into. And I know that's so against what doctors, but for the mental health side of all of it, for it was sure. just too much. It's a byproduct of lack of coaching, right? That, that's not going to happen if I'm in charge of that case. Okay. Right? That's the problem. That's, that's people doing their own coaching, mm -hmm. right? That are on, on home hunting. I'm a blue collar kid with white kid collar education opportunities. I think that's my gift to my patients on this is I'm not scared of the buildings and I have sincere relationships. I'm talking with our inspectors and our mitigator teams all the time on ride home from work, just saying what's going on with Sally's house. What, Oh, you cracked that open and you found more. And if you don't have those relationships with the people you're letting in your patients' homes, this can be a dead end and a burnout and emotionally exhausting. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And that sucks. That breaks my heart. Right. And again, I think that's a product of doctors need to slow it down and do it right. The first time I feel I'm $400 an hour and there's doctors out there charging $840 an hour for what I do. And I'm proud of my prices because you see where most of that goes to is staffing to make sure that there's good follow through after we nail the diagnosis. But a lot of times I'll have an hour visit with someone just to talk buildings. And I'm like, wow, it's weird. I'm charging this person $400. Yeah. And then you think if we didn't have that visit, what you just said happens, right? So what's the cost of moving four times, right? Even non-financial, right? So, so you got your finger on the pulse. This is why no one wants to do this illness. Right, I know. <laughs> Real. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I love, I loved when we connected. I was like, oh my gosh, you really care about your clientele. Graduate. I really do. Yeah. You really do. And, and you're really going to be a good beacon of information and hope and connecting people on the straight and narrow shoemaker protocol. And this is where we want to go more multimedia in regards to just the standard stuff. And one more thing. Oh, yeah. So really quick, um, this is uh, three of my heroes. Uh, Paula Vetter's a retired SIRS nurse practitioner. Okay. Laura Rossi is what I call a SIRS angel. She's an RN who's really like a SIRS social worker. And then Cindy Edwards is a really smart indoor environmental professional. And this is the workbook for Dr. Shoemaker's work. So this okay. is like the, the down to earth, easy, accessible, and it has everything from how to not cross contaminate buildings, how to look for uh, buildings, things to look for, the shoemaker protocol, all that stuff, mold illness, surviving, and more importantly, thriving, right. like me and my family, we want you to come over and hang out with us, start having fun with your lives again. I know we're wrapping up. There's so many more questions I want to ask you. Maybe we'll have you come on next time, but where can people find you? If people want to start working with you, where can um, they find you? Yeah. So I founded Roots and Branches Integrative Healthcare, drdorninger.com, uh, DR like doctor, and then Dorninger, D-O-R, N as in Nancy, I as in Ingrid, N as in Nancy, G-E-R.com. And that's where you can contact. We do a free 10 minute uh, new patient phone call. And I do that because we don't need the business. We need to be right. taking on patients that we think are highly likely to get better here. Had a phone call the other day with a stage four colon cancer spread to the bones. It's not my guy. I sent him to Lisa Alshuler down in, in uh, University of Arizona because she's a great integrated oncologist. Um, so we really make sure you know what you're getting into if we're doing it right the first time and making sure we know what we're getting into and we're highly likely to get results. That's what that 10 minute phone call is really about. It's not about telling me, you know, uh, that you got pitch. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> a, a gold trophy in eighth grade track, you know, it's, right. it's about really brass tacks of this is how we work through a case. Are you one of those people who are highly likely to graduate back to a, a decent quality of life? YouTube, the vitality hour is our podcast and that uh, we haven't even had a SERS episode on there on drdorninger.com medium podcasts. We do have two mold uh, podcasts, uh, fungus among us and is your building making you sick? If you want to hear more about what uh, Judy and I talked about today. And then I'm at uh, DR Eric Dorninger on Instagram handle. And I do post sometimes. We will also be leading the SIRSX.com uh, Shoemaker Conference. This is a collaboration with survivingmold.com and CIRSX.com in Fort Lauderdale last weekend of April. Patients are invited, clients are invited, citizens are invited, doctors are invited. The more awareness we can bring to this illness, the better it gets. Yeah. The keynote speaker is Lawyer McKee, who won a $48 million windfall settlement on moldy apartments, uh, crushing a local Flor Floridian's life. 
So as we start seeing these settlements happen, the awareness goes up. We're going to need more providers. We're going to need more Judy clients like you telling your friends, maybe it serves. Nothing is more fun than graduating people out of chronic illness back to a decent quality of life. There is going to be a $10 a month um, membership for patients and clients on the servesx.com, which is going to get you behind that paywall to really in-depth interviews and and teachings on serves. But there's also just a free glossary of terms and stuff like that. A lot of stuff on servesx.com. Surviving Mold has all of Dr. Shoemaker's peer-reviewed papers nice and, and listed. So if you're trying to get a doctor to wake up and scream for SERS, um, all that's going to be there. So hope you can join us for that. And there is live stream as well for that conference. That's awesome. Yeah, this has been so helpful. I I really think that a lot of the community in carnivore may actually suffer from SERS because they were, again, willing to change their diet completely to a very, very low inflammatory diet. And when I checked their markers, a lot of the markers are already looking good. It's just the MSH is off and certain very specific, but their ADH, a lot of them, they're okay. And it's because they're eating this very clean diet for a while, but it's not enough. And that's where I have come to terms with that meat only does not fix everything. I at one point believe that until I started working with real life clients. And I realized that there's a certain population of people that are not getting fully better. And it bothered me until I ran into SIRS and it's been a beacon of light. Um, obviously there comes a lot of stress with learning this, but I've had clients that have been struggling for decades and they're finally like, thank you for giving me this answer. And they get, they're teary eyed. And, and then a lot of times I cry with them because they're in their forties and fifties and they've been finding so hard of maybe it's the diet, maybe it's the gluten, maybe it's this, maybe it's the salt, maybe I'm eating too much glutamate. And, and it's just, I think you should get tested. And while the price point is a little bit higher, when they finally do, they have this immense release of emotions. And then obviously a little Mm -hmm. after they get start stressing out about everything they need to do, but it's giving them hope in that you don't have to suffer and you don't have to be careful with every food you eat, every, you know, vacation home you're going to. And Um, I I just am really grateful for Dr. Shoemaker and even you coming on to share about this because it's so, so important. Well, I'll leave saying you are a breath of fresh integral air and (laughs) just the, the, the care and sincere concern about finding real answers uh, for your clientele is inspiring and gonna, I'm, I'm high as a kite over here, just knowing we have another friend in screening and, you know, like, like you, we all just need to maintain our objectivity and not get addicted to any fat, including mold. There's a strict diagnostic peer reviewed published diagnostic criteria. You is, or you isn't that's it. Right. And if you are, make sure you're working with someone who's really well-versed in how to accomplish clean building because everything hinges upon that. And you can live a normal life. It's a six to 12 month getting you into your own little air palace and making sure you can work the shoemaker protocol. And then we can support you on how to vacation and see the world and, and still be you. According to Dr. Shoemaker, uh, his big question is what's the, what's the price of a brain? What is the brain worth? You know, and what I will tell you is even if you're five, 10 grand to get through the treatment and you're 50 to hundred grand to get through the building, we then see these people go back to work, graduating people off disability, having people uh, make money, having people being able to take care of an aging parent now because their healthcare issues have cleared that parent might've had SERS and didn't get a chance to get diagnosed, right? Cause that gene came from somewhere. Yep. So I just want to thank you for inviting me on. And I would, if your listeners really want more, um, I'd be happy to do a monthly or a quarterly with you. And we could even take on their questions sure. um, as an open forum, but the, the, the hub of access, I want access even even if you can't do anything about this illness today, just to know you are not lazy, you are not crazy. You right. just have SIRS. There's nothing broken in your spirit. There's nothing broken in your personality. You have corrupted biochemistry and it stops there. So stop storytelling about your marriage or your friends or will I ever be good at my job or whatever the flavor of the day is. Deal with your corrupted biochemistry so your brain can work 
and then release 2.0 version of yourself on your relationships and your job and your community and your service work and everything you want to do in this world. So amen. Thank you. You bet. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. I will put all your information in the show notes. I'll put about um, the SERS X conference in the show notes as well. Thank you again. This has been a pleasure and I just really want to keep spreading this word because I know so many people are undiagnosed and of the 25% of the population, I'm betting that in the carnivore community, there's much more than 25%. Thanks, Judy. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this interview with Dr. Eric Dorniger. I really love a meat-only carnivore elimination diet because it really gets to root cause healing. One way is that you can heal a lot from a meat-only diet and then you can continue to eat this way. For some people, a meat-only elimination diet is not the answer for everything. And so for people that suffer from sears or autoimmune or hormonal imbalances or headaches and a lot of other things, you may want to dig a little deeper if on a meat-only diet, it is not fixing everything. It took me to work with my clients to figure out that there are some people that are not fully healing on a meat-only carnivore cures elimination diet. I would love for meat only to fix everything, but unfortunately there are some people with like a haplotype that may need additional healing. I hope that this conversation has provided you another lever to get to root cause healing. I know it can be a lot to really take in all of this Sears information, but it may just be the answer to really get you back to optimal healing. I think everyone deserves to live their best life. And I hope that this again, provide you that support. Thanks for listening. Please make sure to like and subscribe and please leave a review and make sure to eat a lot of meat. Take care of your bodies because it is the only place you have to live. I will talk to you later. Bye guys. Bye.